Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be using Henry Cejudo, or as he likes to call himself, Triple C, in the flyweight division. And prior to this, I didn't really enjoy using Henry Cejudo. I maybe used him a couple times this season, but he just didn't feel good to me. And then the other day I was watching Goat Stream and he used him, and he was a using very well so he's grappling and he's, the striking look good so I thought why don't I try using myself hence the game plan I'm going to show you today so this is a high level fight to level 20 players I think I'm slightly higher on the score wise and my opponent's using TJ Dillashaw and obviously TJ Dillashaw for me is probably the best fighter of this weight class and um, TJ Dillashaw he's got a very good ground game as well so I knew it wasn't going to be easy, and obviously TJ did saw sure striking is very good, so that was one thing for me to bear in mind. I knew straight away that obviously it's going to be a challenge. This is my first time using Henry Cejudo in months. Like I'm not the biggest fan of him on the game, and this gameplay here after this game it changed my mind to maybe how good Henry Cejudo actually is. So as you can see, five round fight. So I'm not looking to use too much stamina and I am the shorter fighter here I'm using my head movement well at the moment to avoid my opponent's punches and Henry just when I was, he felt so fast and his hands felt so smooth and the combos were really flowing and I'm not sure if I used him a bantamweight before maybe and I didn't like him but flyaway he felt really really good I mean everything was sort of flowing well and it was to the point that I was I was thoroughly impressed that maybe now I found a new fighter rider and using this division. So coming into this fight, obviously I was thinking of adopting a grappling heavy approach to this fight. But as the first couple minutes of this fight's played out in the first round, the striking's felt very good, almost to the point where I didn't feel like I had to look for a takedown at all. I mean. I was expecting to come in here round one and be forcing these tight grappling exchanges and avoiding any sort of boxing but to my surprise that wasn't the case I mean I don't like shooting for takedowns in round one but if it's a fighter I don't feel comfortable with I normally do just to get them in my area of comfort but I don't know he just felt really good and my opponent is um he's a good fighter and he was fighting well but I just felt in my element at this point and Cejudo was flying very well. And when you're using Henry Cejudo, I can't vouch for Bountain weight, but at fly weight, he feels very good, very fast. These uh, combinations were good. His hands felt like they were doing damage. They were breaking the block when they needed to. He's got a good teep kick and a good front kick. He, um, his health stats felt very good. I mean, even though my opponent was hitting me, he wasn't doing too much damage. So, he's got a lot of positives and obviously, with his stand-up being this good, which was surprising, but with it being this good, it means that I can go into these exchanges, win the exchanges, and even if they don't and they force a takedown, that's fine because I'm more than confident on the feet. And there's there's nowhere my opponent can take it now that I'm not comfortable. If my opponent wants to clinch, that's fine. I welcome the clinch game. If my opponent wants to take me down, that's more than fine because I don't mind being on the ground either. And if my opponent wants to keep it standing, that's fine with me as well. So, overall, I was thoroughly impressed. I know, um, obviously, Henry Cejudo in real life gets memed a lot because of the whole Triple C and that he's the greatest combat athlete of all time, which, to be fair, he is probably the greatest combat athlete of all time. I mean, no one's achieved what Henry Cejudo has achieved. But, yeah, it was a good round there for me. I'd say I probably edged the round. Uh, my opponent done a good job, but I think I just done a better job. And going into this round, I wanted to implement more of the same, but I also wanted to work in a takedown. I wanted to feel Henry Cejudo's ability on the ground, and I wanted to test my opponent's ability on the ground also. So, one thing I found really good is obviously I could disguise the takedowns with um, striking. And not only that, because I've been striking my opponent for the whole of the previous round, my op opponent probably isn't expecting a takedown and it was just it was just working out well 
I didn't have to force the exchanges like I thought I was going to have to. And I've started to read some of my opponents striking. So when I needed to work in a takedown, I could because I was getting used to the patterns. I mean, he sways back quite a lot and throws the uppercut, which is one thing I noticed straight away. He was uh, constantly swaying. I mean, I probably could have worked in leg kicks in this fight if I really wanted to because when someone's moving their head a lot, the best thing to target is their legs because they can't move their legs or protect them if they're moving their head. You can see I'm working in the head kick well, the front kick, the teep kick. I mean, it, I was, I was, it was pretty much a kickboxing slash boxing exchange for most of this round and all of the first round. And I was winning these exchanges, but I wanted to test my opponent's ability on the ground and I wanted to see how dominant Sudo is on the round. So it's coming to around the two minute mark. So majority of the rounds has been played out and I've won most of these exchanges in my opinion and I was keen normally a minute and a half to two minutes when I usually shoot for takedowns if I feel that I'm dominating a round I normally look at the clock see how much time I have left to work with and if it's around that mark I normally take my opponent down and try hold them there for the rest of the round do some damage on the ground and it just looks good on the scorecard so that's my tip for you if you're dominating and you're using a wrestler and you're thinking of when to work a takedown. I normally do it around a minute and a half to two minute mark. And this again is just because the it looks good for the judges. And also, if I take him down, it's preferably the second minute, last two minutes of the round. If I take him down and I work him into position for a submission, normally submissions tend to take, obviously depending on your using and how good your submissions, they normally take anywhere between 40 seconds to 60. So. If I take my opponent down, I've then got a minute to work with and get him in the position for the submi submission and then a minute to pull off the actual submission. So that's my sort of ideology behind taking them down at set times. And as you can see, I'm having great success here of uh, dominating my opponent on the ground. And obviously, there's, there's not much time left on the clock when we both stand up. And both show respect to be there in the last round. And moving on to the third round, I feel like I'm in a very comfortable position. I mean, I've dominated the past two rounds. And although I haven't, I don't believe I've got any knockdowns or stuns, I'm in a good position. I mean, I feel like I've broke my opponent's block several times. And now, in this round, the third round, just before the championship rounds, when I'm looking to push the pace a bit, I mean, my stamina's in a good position. I know my opponent's been frying a lot. And he's uh, been missing quite a few strikes. And I hit him with the left hook there. And as you see, I'm sneaking in the knees just to do a little bit of damage. And that stun gave me a lot of confidence. I mean, I knew I was in a good position already. And now we're stunning him again. So I know my opponent's health must not be in the best position. I go for a clinch there. He sways back and hits me with the uppercut, which is beautiful work for my opponent. I mean, my opponent's still very dangerous. Is now implementing the roundhouse kick to the body, which is smart with TJ Dillashaw, that's a very effective tool. Uh, but a lot of people shy away from it when facing a grappler because obviously if I catch the kick I can work a takedown. But my opponent's done a good job of not being scared and frying them when he has to. And as you can see he's backing me towards the fence here, which is not really where I want to be. Ideally it's where I want my opponent to be. So I'm using head movement to minimise my block damage and to uh, get out of these situations. And as you can see, I'm just, I'm still in the range to get hit. I've got my block up, and here I shoot for a takedown. My opponent does a good job of denying. And then I see that my opponent doesn't have much stamina and he's against the cage. I go for the clinch. My opponent does a good job. He doesn't let me move him. He's doing some damage to my body as I've done some to his. So again, credit to my opponent there. he done the right thing. He didn't let me walk him down towards the cage, because then I would have got his back. And my opponent's pressuring a lot, and obviously I feel like this is because of the knockdown. Shoot for the takedown here, and I get it. And here I'm just just looking to soften my opponent up before going for some big ground and pound. Because I know I've already done some damage to his head, so this is only adding to it. And you've got to be wary when facing TJ Dillashaw. Because he's got the Kimura. And the referee opts to stand us up very quickly. Which was confusing to me, but 
that's fine. I was doing well in the exchanges. I'm getting a pressure a bit more, but stuff I can't deal with. Hit him for a beautiful uppercut there. As you can see, I work the body after I hit him with the uppercut, and I'm trying not to throw too many big punches. More of a flurry of punches is what I'm looking for, and being direct and accurate. Managed to get the drop on my opponent after several stuns this round, using the ground and pound of Cejudo, and we managed to get the finish. So my opponent was a very good fighter, but Henry Cejudo just had the answer. And Henry Cejudo felt amazing on this game. Um, someone I'm going to be using more in the future, and I really recommend using. So that was the fight. Uh, the scorecards are coming up in a second. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.